Welcome to this video lecture series on the international law of the sea. These videos answer questions such as why do the oceans matter? What are the different priorities in the use of the oceans? Which will provide us with the keys to understanding international maritime law. How did the whole area of international law relating to the sea develop over time? What are the different maritime zones that are regulated in great detail in the international law of the sea? What are the principles that ensure free navigation of merchant and military fleets around the globe? How does international law attempt to protect the marine environment? And finally, the question of how to deal with disputes in the international law of the sea. So let's jump into ocean waters and related legal issues right away. Why are the oceans so important? Why is the international law of the sea so relevant? Oceans cover three-fifths of the surface of the globe. They offer shipping routes that account for two-thirds of worldwide trade in goods. They also set the stage for naval power projection, with all kinds of military fleets showing up in all parts of the world. The oceans are incredibly rich in resources, namely fisheries and hydrocarbons, oil and gas. And they are full of underwater astonishments, full of riches of nature. To get a sense of the richness of the marine environment, I invite you to take a look at David Gallo's Tale of Wonders. You easily find it on YouTube. Let's move on to the next point on our list the different priorities in the use of the oceans, which regularly conflict with each other and which also offer us important keys to understanding international maritime law. So what are those priorities that the international law of the sea needs to take into account? First of all, there is obviously a strong interest for free navigation of merchant and military fleets around the globe. This is about securing high sea freedoms for all nations. And of course, the nations that are most interested in this are the major maritime powers. On the other hand, there are also strong interests of coastal states in controlling the sea areas near their shores and exploiting resources along their coasts. This includes living resources such as fisheries and non-living resources such as hydrocarbons, oil and gas located in the continental shelf. This is about granting exclusive rights to coastal states rights to exercise jurisdiction and exploit resources. The rights of coastal states may become obstacles for free navigation. There may be conflicts of interest between maritime powers and coastal states. However, in that context, we have to keep in mind that maritime powers also have their coasts. They are coastal states at the same time. Which is why many nations are interested in both free navigation and exclusive rights to the exploitation of resources. Yet other priorities are protecting the marine environment, enabling scientific research and regulating deep sea mining. This is all about managing common living spaces and common resources. At their core, the oceans are considered common heritage of mankind in current international maritime law. Even though they can potentially clash with interests in exploiting resources, these common interests are crucial for the survival of the planet. It's the interest of the whole world population, including future generations, that are at stake here. Let me give you some examples of how international maritime law addresses the issues related to those different priorities. 
As far as free navigation is concerned, the international law of the sea offers very specific rules for navigation through territorial waters and straits. These are the rules on innocent passage and straight passage. We will discuss them later in this video lecture series. The exclusive rights of coastal states are defined in a very detailed regulation of a number of different maritime zones, including the so-called exclusive economic zone, which is by far the most important. We will come back to all of this as well. The protection of the marine environment and the legal framework for scientific research and deep sea mining are dominated by the common heritage principle. The institution that is tasked to take care of this heritage is the International Seabed Authority. So keep this overview in mind. That much for the first two steps in this online lecture. In the next video, we will go into how it all developed. We will learn about the historical developments that shaped the international law of the sea as we know it today. But I think in the meantime, we deserve a short break. And don't forget David Gallo's amazing TED talk. It's worth watching.